We made it to 2 Kings. We're going to read about the fate of all who refuse to follow the will of God. Um, the kingdom is already divided, so let's read 2 Kings chapter 1. Elijah confronts King Ahaziah. After King Ahab's death, Elena and Moab rebelled against Israel. One day, Israel's new king, Ahaziah, fell through the latticework of an upper room at his palace in Samaria. And he was seriously injured. So he sent messengers to the temple of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to ask whether he would recover. But the angel of the Lord told Elijah, who was from Tishbe, go and confront the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, is there no god in Israel? Why are you going to Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to ask whether the king will recover? Now, therefore, this is what the Lord says. You will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will surely die. So Elijah went to deliver the message. When the messengers returned to the king, he asked them, Why have you returned so soon? And they replied, A man came up to us and told us to go back to the king and give him this message. This is what the Lord says. Is there no God in Israel? Why are you sending men to Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to ask whether you will recover? Therefore, because you have done this, you will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will surely die. What sort of man was he? The king demanded. What did he look like? They replied, he was a hairy man and wore a leather belt around his waist. Elijah from Teshbe, the king, the king exclaimed. Then he sent an army captain with 50 soldiers to arrest him. They found him sitting on top of a hill. The captain said to him, Man of God, the king has commanded you to come down with us. But Elijah replied to the captain, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy you and your 50 men. Then fire fell down from heaven and killed them all. So the king sent another captain with 50 men. The captain said to him, Man of God, the king demands you to come down at once. And Elijah replied, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy you and your fifty men. And again the fire of God fell from heaven and killed them all. Once more the king sent a third captain with fifty men. But this time the captain went to the hill and fell to his knees before Elijah. I'm guessing he heard what happened to the other men. He pleaded with him, Oh, man of God! Please spare my life and the lives of these, your fifty servants. See how the fire from heaven came down and destroyed the first two groups. But now, please spare my life. Then the angel Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him and don't be afraid of him. So Elijah got up and went with him to the king. <clears throat> and Elijah said to the king, This is what the Lord says. Why did you send messengers to Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, to ask whether you will recover? Is there no god in Israel to answer your question? Therefore, because you have done this, you will never leave the bed you are lying on. You will surely die. So Ahaziah died, just as the Lord had promised for Elijah. Since Ahaziah did not have a son to succeed him, his brother Joram became the next king. This took place in the second year of the reign of Jehoram, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. The rest of the events in Ahaziah's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Chapter 2, Elisha's Ministry When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were traveling from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Bethel. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went down together to Bethel. The group of prophets from Bethel came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied again, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went, to, they went on together to Jericho. Then the, Lord, then, the, then the group of prophets from Jericho came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elisha said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go down to the Jordan River. 
But again, Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. The river divided and the two of them went across on dry ground. When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. And Elisha replied, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit and become your successor. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah replied. If you see me when I am taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. As they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire. It drove between the two men, separating them, and Elijah was carried by a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, I see the chariots and the charioteers of Israel. And as they disappeared from sight, Elisha tore his clothes in distress. Elisha picked up Elijah's cloak, which had fallen when he was taken up. Then Elisha returned to the bank of the Jordan River. He struck the water with Elijah's cloak and cried out, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Then the river divided and Elisha went across. When the group of prophets from Jericho saw from a distance what happened, they exclaimed, Elijah's spirit rests on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Sir, they said, just say the word and 50 of our strongest men will search the wilderness for your master. Perhaps the spirit of the Lord has left him on some mountain or in some valley. No, Elisha said, don't send them. But they kept urging him until they shamed him into agreeing. And he finally said, all right, send them. So 50 men searched for three days, but did not find Elijah. Elisha was still at Jericho when they returned. Didn't I tell you not to go, he asked. One day the leaders of the town of Jericho visited Elisha. We have a problem, my lord, they told him. This town is located in pleasant surroundings, as you can see, but the water is bad and the land is unproductive. Elisha said, bring me a new bowl with salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went out to the spring that supplied the town with water and threw the salt into it. And he said, this is what the Lord says. I have purified the water. It will no longer cause death or infertility. And the water has remained pure ever since, just as Elisha said. Elisha left Jericho and went up to Bethel. And as he was walking along the road, a group of boys from the town began mocking and making fun of him. Go away, Baldy, they chanted. Go away, Baldy. Elisha turned around and looked at them and he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of them. From there, Elisha went to, Car to Mount Carmel and finally returned to Samaria. I'm going to read a little bit of that again. These children, these young men, and they could be of any age, I guess less than 17, um, because when they say boys, boy can be anything 17 and below. Go away, Baldy, go away, Baldy, they chanted. Elisha turned around and looked at them, and he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two bears came out of the woods and mauled 42 of them. From there, Elisha went on to Mark Carmel and finally returned to Samaria. I think it's a very interesting story. And I've heard one person give a really remarkable answer about that. And I think it was from the book of Leviticus where it blatantly says, because these young men are coming from Bethel and they are making fun of and mocking this prophet of the Lord, which is really not good for Israel. God asked for them to be respected because these guys are coming in the name of the Lord. Um, so I'm looking forward to pressing through the rest of 2 Kings. I love reading the Bible. I love deep diving through the scriptures and trying to connect them and the law and the Old Testament and the New Testament. I think it's so rich in wisdom and knowledge. And it's really good to draw close to God by reading his holy word. So thank you for joining me and I hope to see you very soon.